If you continue with the optimal medical therapy of heart failure, in heart failure with mild reduced ejection fraction, you also can try one of those substances to assist the patient and to reduce the symptoms and improve mortality, so the outcomes of the patients. It's the same four pillars, the ARNI, the SGLT2 inhibitor, the MRAs and the beta blockers. But for the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we only have one pillar so far. The SGLT2 inhibitors do also help patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So it reduces mortality and is also nephroprotective. To not miss any substance, let's talk about what else is there for heart failure treatment in patients with reduced ejection fraction. Well, there's Iverpadine, which is used if you have a sinus rhythm, even though you have a fully dosed beta blocker and you have a sinus rhythm, a heart rate of above 70 per minute, an ejection fraction of below or 35%, so we are in the region where the heart failure of reduced ejection fraction is taking place, or if you have a contraindication against beta blockers. The loop diuretics are for the treatment of fluid overload in heart failure patients with reduced, mildly reduced, or preserved ejection fraction. There is also a relatively new kit on the block. It's the substance Verisiguat. It's used in the New York Heart Association class 2 to 4. If there is still worsening, so dyspneic patients with optimal medical therapy and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, you also have to think about the CRTD systems in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with a left bundle branch block above or 150 milliseconds. Think about the ICD in non and especially in ischemic cause of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction in case there is no left bundle branch block present. In patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, it's also important to think about iron deficiency. And what else can we do for those patients? We can send them to exercise rehabilitation. The multi-professional disease management is very important. And in younger patients, it's also important to think about heart transplantation. To summarize the SGLT2 inhibitors, to also summarize this lecture, if diabetes, yes or no, in cardiology, it doesn't matter for the heart. It's an optimal treatment for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. It is also working for heart failure in preserved ejection fraction. And what these SGLT2 inhibitors did show us is that tinkling sugar can be pretty cool. The patients included in the studies for the SGLT2 inhibitors were truly not healthy. So they were really sick patients, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with mild reduced and preserved ejection fraction. What do they actually do for our patients? They reduce the hospitalizations for heart failure, they reduce the cardiovascular death and the hospitalization in HFMREF and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. They are nephroprotective. This is an important effect of those SGLT2 inhibitors that I want to really point out and this is important for diastolic dysfunction as well. This is the first and so far the only medication we can give and where we have data that they help for heart failure with preserved ejection fraction.